Good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship at Lino Lakes Community Church. We are glad you're here. Uh, this week, we still don't have any music for our online worship, and we're actually doing something a little different. Um, I was exposed to COVID last Thursday, and so if you come to church on Sunday morning, um, you'll get something similar from our lay leader, Mike Evans, but we're going to, uh, in lieu of a sermon this morning, we're going to have a Lectio Divina practice on the idea of generativity. Now, these last few weeks, well, since Easter, really, you know, I've been exploring this idea of generativity. And we've been exploring it in a, bit, in a biblical sense, you know, gener- generativity as the idea of the mustard seed growing through faith and action, so much so that it becomes a nourishing refuge within the fabric of creation. But what does generativity mean in our cultural sense. You know, our goal for this morning is to sit in the definition of generativity and then see how that connects to Jesus's parable of the sower from Matthew 13. In her article titled, What is Generativity and Why Should I Care? Dr. Deborah Heiser says this, Most of us look at our lives in terms of physical development. We learn to walk and talk as children and continue to gain physical ability through adolescence and young adulthood, and then begin a slow physical decline. Are we done? Is that it? No, that's not the end, it's the beginning. Our midlife years are filled with emotional growth. Generativity is an emotional development term coined by the famous psychologist Eric Erickson and studied extensively in recent years by Professor Dan McAdams. It means caring for others without expecting anything in return. For many people younger than 50, the concept of giving to others without expecting anything in return should sound like a fairly lame milestone to strive for. After all, we are striving for and expecting outward achievement, work, and home life goals. However, most of us forget about emotional milestones in our lives, such as meaningful relationships with friends and family, passing on values, skills, and knowledge to others, and answering the question, what do I want my mark on the world to be? So what do we do? Well, we add emotional growth to our expectations. What we know from research is that Giving to others and having meaningful relationships leads to higher levels of well-being and better physical health. So add some generativity to your, to your life. Here are three forms of generativity. Mentoring, you know, passing on knowledge, skills, value, and culture to others. This can be done in so many different communities, whether at work, home, or church. Volunteering, giving your time knowledge, and ability to organizations and individuals without expecting pay in return, or philanthropy, giving financial resources to organizations, charities, and foundations. Are you still not quite sure if generativity is important? Well, here's a kicker. You know, those who do not reach the stage of generativity remain stagnant. That is, they are stuck at a point in life lacking purpose and our accomplishments don't have meaning. We all know stagnant people from literature and film, and those things are rife with examples of stagnant characters. Think of Ebenezer Scrooge. You know, he's an example of someone who was wealthy and had a long, successful career, but was unhappy and bitter. He was stagnant until he becomes meaningfully connected with others and gives back to others through generative practices. You know, those who practice generativity tend to be physically healthier and live longer. It is as simple as that. Our connections with others in our community and the world and our ability to care about others carries us into our late, lo- mid- bleh, into our late midlife and beyond with purpose, productivity, and meaning, and health. You know, the phrase to Tis better to give than to receive is actually true. So generativity is giving without expecting something in return. Mentoring, volunteering, serving others 
are the lived out examples of generativity that psychologists see in our culture. So I want us to hold this as we read our Lectio Divina text from Matthew 13, 1 through 10. You know, Lectio Divina is Latin for divine reading. It's a form of meditative prayer meant to give scripture the opportunity to be the living word, rather than a contextual analysis of the text. To let the text speak to you directly. So what we'll do is read part of Matthew three times and ask three different questions. And I'll tell you the questions and we'll read it, and then we'll take about 30 seconds of, of kind of contemplative time to reflect on our answers. And so that's what I want us to hold. The, Whichever question we're asking, and then, then this idea of generativity being something where we give without the expectation of receiving. So our first question this morning is, what word or phrase is speaking to you from Matthew 13? So Matthew 13, 1 through 10. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered round him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore, and then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil, so it sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seeds fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why did you speak to people in parables? What word or phrase is speaking to you today? Our second question, is there a person or an event in your life that comes to mind when you hear this text? Matthew 13, 1 through 10. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. And as he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched, and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? Is there a person or event in your life that comes to mind when you hear this reading? And our third question today. What is God calling you to do 
be or change through this reading? Matthew 13, 1 through 10. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large, large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it, while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop a hundred, sixty, or thirty times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let them hear. The disciples came to him and asked, Why do you speak to the people in parables? What is God calling you to do, be, or change through this reading? Feel free to offer your reflections to those who you are with or write them down or journal them or do some sort of generative practice that, that helps you integrate this reading into your life. And let us conclude with prayer. Boundless shaper of people and nations, you are beyond our knowing, yet closer than our every breath. You are before us and behind us, surrounding us with your love and fashioning all of creation in the secret depths of your heart. With every thought, with every song, and with every prayer, turn these fragile earthen vessels of our lives into the spirit-filled body of your love. Thank you for joining us for worship this morning. God send you, the Spirit fill you, Christ go with you and be with Christ, always and everywhere. Go in peace.